Hey, welcome back. I'm John, Outreach Pastor here at New Life, and we're so glad you're in this. Have you ever tried to do something good only to have it blow up in your face? Maybe you attempted to help somebody with giving them some advice and then they yelled at you, or maybe you volunteered to cook a meal for someone and it burned, or uh, maybe you loan money to a friend and, and they don't pay it back and then they feel guilty and try to avoid you. Or maybe you bought your wife something to cook with for her birthday and that didn't go over so well and you wind up sleeping on the couch. Or maybe you commanded a demon to come out of some slave girl and their owners got all mad at you and put you in jail. Well, maybe that didn't happen to you, but it did happen to Paul and Silas. See, they were just going to a prayer meeting and they meet a girl who is twice enslaved, once by her owners who are using her to make money off her fortune telling. And The other is by a demon who's actually enabling her to tell people's fortunes. And her demonic master basically causes her to harass Paul until he has had enough. And Paul turns and says to the demon within her, he says, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And instantly he left her. It's a good thing, right? This is right out of Acts chapter 16. And she's free from the demon, but not everyone is thrilled. It goes on, it says, her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul and Silas, dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. And it was this big scene. You know, they were just good old boys, never mean and no harm. But not everyone appreciated their hopeful attitude. And in Acts 16, verses 22 through 24, it says, a mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas. And the city officials ordered them to be stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape, so the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Sounds like a bad day. So the first thing we've got to remember is that good intentions don't guarantee a perfect outcome. Ain't that the truth? But what if we refused to take those risks? What if we said, you know what, I'm just going to play it safe. Think about all the things that we could miss out on. You see, back in the late kind of 80s, I, I got involved with this thing called Operation Rescue, and my intentions were so good. I thought, man, there's all these moms that are kind of being victimized and, and all these unborn babies that really needed someone to step in and, 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 and help them. And so what we would do is we would go and, and, and we would just kind of do a sit-in in front of uh, like a, a Planned Parenthood or, or another clinic. And, and uh, it was always peaceful. We prayed, we sang. Uh, there were people who would counsel the women. All these really good things, all these really great intentions. But guess what? Not everybody was thrilled. And eventually, you guessed it, yours truly got hauled off to jail. So just like for Paul and Silas, my good intentions didn't keep me out of jail. Go on in their story, and it says, Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to the foundations, and all the doors immediately flew open, and the chains on every prisoner fell off. So the second thing we need to remember is this. Spiritual breakthrough often happens in the darkest hour. So fast forward, I went to court, wound up getting put into Santa Clara County Jail. And one night after I was coming back towards the barracks from eating dinner, there was this group of men standing out and there was this really big Italian guy. I'll never forget. And he wasn't letting anybody just walk on past. Uh, See, he was a part of this worship time that was happening right out there in the fresh air. Just people, these guys worshiping God. And he was pulling one person after another to come join their church. And so I went over there and started singing these songs. And we didn't have a band. We didn't have lights or, or all the sound equipment. It was just guys and their voices And not everybody could sing real well. But the reality was, as we started singing these praises to God, it was like all of the razor wire and all of the guards and everything, they just sort of disappeared. 
And I started feeling like I was flying through the air, just worshiping God, the freest I've ever felt. What a contrast. Because here I was, I didn't have the ability to just go and do whatever I wanted. I was locked up. But because as we worshiped God, it just, he brought this freedom that was so amazing. Maybe that's something like what Paul and Silas felt. So in the middle of a dark and scary place, just know that God can show up and he can set us free. And the story continues for Paul and Silas. The jailer runs in, sees the doors open and freaks out. His conclusion is everyone escaped, I'm dead. So he gets ready to take his own life. But Paul stops him and he says, look, everybody's here. The jailer can't believe it. And he cries out, how can I be saved? And it says, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. Even at that hour of night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. And then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. And he brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. How amazing. So this is the third thing, is that God always has someone that he wants us to reach through our struggle. Another thing happened when I was in that place in Santa Clara County. This guy walked up to me while I was kind of sitting on my bunk. And he was uh, also a very large man. He had obviously spent some time lifting some weights. And uh, he walked up to me and he asked me, so are you in here for uh, protesting? against abortion and all I could think of is my head in my head was I'm about to die this guy is not gonna like that I did that he's gonna be upset and he's gonna feel like he just wants to tear me limb from limb and so I kind of in my the only thing I could really say was yes and he basically said to me wow I wouldn't have the guts to do that now, he used a little bit more colorful language than that, but that's basically what he said. And I thought, man, here's this guy who looks like he has all this strength. And he was looking at me saying, I don't know if I could be that strong. Hopefully, there were seeds that were planted in his life that day. Maybe, maybe later, who knows what happened in his life. But I feel like he was one person that maybe heard a little bit of what God can do in someone's life. See, everywhere we go, especially in those dark places, even when we feel that our weaknesses disqualify us from God's plan, He leads us to those who probably wouldn't hear it if we weren't walking through a struggle. Think about it. Wouldn't you rather talk to someone who has gone through what you're going through? See, our obstacles can become God's opportunities if we ask Him to use them. The truth is, Life happens, and yes, manure happens too. And right when you're trying to do good, it can all hit the fan. But don't quit. God has something really good, something eternally significant He wants to accomplish through us in the middle of all of that mess. The darkness will never overcome the light. Razor wire can't stop what God has planned. And we get to look back and say, wow, that was totally a God thing. If we'll just let him use every situation we're in. If we'll just let him use every circumstance that we go through. Would you join me in prayer? Jesus, thank you that you give us such great examples in your word. Thank you for Paul and Silas and even the struggle and the, the fight that they had to go through. I thank you that they, in the middle of their storm, in the middle of that jail cell, they still sing praises to you with their feet locked up, no real answers yet. They still praised you. God, give us that same heart and help us to see these hard things as opportunities for you to work in us and through us. God, we just thank you. Thank you in advance for even some of the struggles that are coming our way. Help us in the middle of those to lean on you, to praise you, 
and to let you use those to be a witness to those around us. Pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Have a great discussion.